So this is where a lot of the issue comes in is the deep seated struggle that we have inside of ourselves to say, you suck. You can't do that. You're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not fast enough. You, you aren't smart enough. You didn't graduate high school. You didn't go to college. You, I've always been the fat kid. Welcome to Bald Business, the naked truth in entrepreneurship. Let's begin. Hello, hello. Happy whatever day it is that you're listening. Could be happy Friday. That's what it is right now for me. Um, Could be happy Saturday. Could be happy Monday. Maybe you're thinking, happy Monday? Who says happy Monday? But I think that's the thing, right, is why do people say happy specific days versus not another day? It's all in how you look at it. It's all in how you approach it. Are you looking at the day positively or are you looking at the day negatively? Generally, it's going to equal the results that you see with that day. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Taking responsibility. Now, generally speaking, we all love owning our progress, right? We love owning the goal, the victory, the weight loss, the bonus, the the new car. Like we love owning that progress. Like, yes, I did it. I achieved it. Rarely do we enjoy owning our setbacks. If we don't own our setbacks, we can't get to the root of what our setbacks are usually caused from, which is starts with thoughts. Thoughts, then actions, actions, and results. So thoughts control results, right? Without owning the setbacks, we can't acknowledge that we need to change the thoughts. So what I want to talk about today is taking responsibility, own your progress, and own your setbacks. Three parts your thoughts, your actions, and your results. So thoughts, control your thoughts, own your thoughts. It's gonna help control your actions, you're gonna own your actions. You're gonna be able to control your results, own your results, okay? Now, there's been a lot of studies done on the idea of positive thinking, on the idea of mindset, on the idea of how you think about things or how you approach things. If you approach something positively versus approach it negatively, the odds of you being able to achieve it are lower when you approach it negatively. Like there's been all kinds of studies done on this and it even went as far to say, there's a study that was done a few years ago that even went as far to say that if you put two people in a room, one of them was super negative, one of them was super positive, the super negative person was more likely to get cancer now it doesn't mean that if you're negative you're going to automatically get cancer if you're positive you're automatically not going to get cancer what that means is that in a study that was conducted they found that people who got cancer tend tended to think more negatively okay now here's what i love about mindset and thinking and thoughts and this whole idea of positivity is it's something that you can work on and you can change and you can control it's not easy by any means just like with anything else in life for the most part right it's not it's not something where you're like yeah i'm gonna be positive tomorrow and you're gonna wake up and it's just gonna happen it's something you have to work at so three sections thoughts actions results Thoughts. The story that you tell yourself is likely to come true. Recently, I have been thinking about my fitness goals. So toward the beginning of this year, uh, I said I need to do more cardio. I need to lose a little bit of body fat. I need to feel better when I'm playing sports. Uh, I need to work on my heart health. And so I started doing that. I set a goal and I moved forward. And I told myself, this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to do it. This is what you're going to – this is the – the outcome that you're going to have, right? And sometimes I didn't want to go run. Sometimes I didn't want to do the cardio circuit. Sometimes I didn't want to do those things. But my thoughts were, when I do them, this is what I'll get from it. 
when I do this, this is what I'll achieve. So I had to think, this is what I want. I had to tell myself the story, this is what I'm going to have. This is what I'm going to get out of this. Now that's super simple, right? It's a super simple um, example. But the story you tell yourself is likely to come true in any form. So if you tell yourself, you go into a project and you think, oh my gosh, this is going to be the hardest thing in the world, it's probably going to be one of the hardest things you've experienced. If you go in and you tell yourself, hey, this is going to be tough, but I've got this. I can do this. I can achieve this. I know what it takes. You know, I've never dealt with this specific thing maybe, but I know the energy, the output, and the drive that it's going to take for me to reach it, and so I'm going to do it. I'm going to achieve it. That is likely going to be the outcome doesn't make it easy but again it's your thoughts what's the story that you're telling yourself what's the story you're telling yourself about your business what's the story you're telling yourself about your fitness your health your family what's the story that you're telling yourself about where you are going and who you are becoming the second thing with thoughts is a lot of people fear thinking about the result or thinking big, quote unquote, right? So let's just use uh, fitness as an example. Somebody who needs to lose 50, 75 pounds, right? Maybe that's you today. Maybe you're thinking, man, I really need to hit the gym. I really need to start exercising. I really need to lose some weight. It's fearful to think what it's gonna take to reach that goal. The amount of time, the amount of effort, the amount of energy, the amount of, um, I don't want to say restrictions, but discipline, the amount of discipline that's going to take, the amount of changes that it's going to take to reach that goal. And that's with anything. That's what it could be with business. People hold themselves back in starting business all the time because, well, what's the actual, like, what's it actually going to take for me to do that? Like, that's big thinking. But you can't fear that. You have to embrace that. Because if you can't visualize it, you can't achieve it. If you can't see it, you can't achieve it. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't mean just because you can visualize it, you're automatically going to have it. That's not what that means. What it means is that if you can visualize it, you're a lot you're a lot more likely to be able to achieve it. And the third part with thoughts is overcoming negative self-talk. So this is where a lot of the issue comes in is the deep-seated struggle that we have inside of ourselves to say, you suck, you can't do that, you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not fast enough, you you aren't smart enough, you didn't graduate high school, you didn't go to college, you have always been the fat kid, right? It's these negative things that come from within maybe it comes from an external force as well but a lot of times it doesn't a lot of times it's things that we've identified about ourselves that we don't care for or we don't like or ultimately we hate and we're not addressing it so you've got to address your thoughts your thoughts lead to your actions your actions lead to your results which ultimately means that your thoughts lead to your results And your thoughts definitely lead to a likely outcome of your results. So the story that you tell yourself is most likely going to come true. What is that story? Stop fearing this idea of thinking big and start imagining what's possible. And then you've got to start working on your negative self-talk. Well, how do I do that? How do I, how do I stop, stop doing that? There's a lot of resources out there, but one of the things I will tell you, that you can do is first you have to acknowledge how often you are negatively thinking about yourself and the only way to do that is to track it track it for seven days anytime something happens and you automatically think a negative thought about yourself write a little mark on a piece of paper anytime something happens and you automatically think a positive thought again write a mark on a little piece of paper that will show you it'll be very eye-opening to you if you are more a negative thinker or more a positive thinker. Okay? So that that would be the first thing that you would do. Now, once we start working on our thoughts, our thoughts are going to control our actions. 
right? So if we if we can kind of start getting away from negative self-talk, we can start imagining what's really possible and start changing the narrative, start changing the story that we're telling ourselves each and every day when we wake up that instead of being a failure, instead of being you know, overweight and unhappy and not reaching my goals, I'm I'm fit and I'm healthy and I'm happy and I've I've hit the bonus and I've bought the new car and I'm on my way to getting a home, whatever it is, whatever the goals are. You got if you change that story, your actions will change. Cuz again, thoughts control actions. If you believe that you can, you probably will. If you believe that you can't, you're not even going to try. So actions. If you want something better, something more, you you have to actually you have to go after it. You can't you can't just think about it and hope that it happens. You have to first think about it and then apply action toward that goal. So you can't just do the first step of recognizing negative thinking. You have to then go into a deeper dive of self-development and start changing those behaviors and changing those habits. There's a lot of ways that you can do that, but that's not what today's show is about. Today's show is about taking responsibility for your thoughts, your actions, and your results. So in actions, if you want something better, you've, you've got to go toward it. You've got to move toward it. A lot of people will say, well, I want this. Okay, well, what does it take to do that? Well, you know, I've got to go to the gym. I've got to, I've got to drink better, more water. I've got to eat better. Okay, well, are you doing those things? Well, no. Why not? If you want something better, you've got to move towards something better. Conquer fear by moving. The only way to conquer fear is to move. If you fear thinking big, if you fear imagining what's actually possible, the only way that you're going to conquer that little by little is by getting a little bit closer to that goal. Just start. Just just start. If the, if the goal is a business, let's just say it's a storefront, you want five locations, and you can't even imagine right this second having one location, just start thinking about what it's going to take to have one location. What do I need to do first? Do I need funding? Do I need um, business licenses? Do I need an accountant? Do I need a coach? Do I need an advisor? Like, What do I need? Make a list of things that you need. The only way you're going to conquer that fear is by moving forward. So you've got to start doing things. You've got to start doing little things each and every day. And the third part of action is do whatever it takes and don't be ashamed. This is what I mean. A lot of people are going to judge you. And I, I see this in fitness all the time. Someone says, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm going to lose 50 to 75 pounds. I'm going to change my life. I'm going to feel great. I am going to be a better person. I want to become someone not different as from who I am, but I want to become someone different as to how I perform and how I act and what I do. And people around them get annoyed, they get frustrated, they become super unsupportive, and then all of a sudden you start feeling this shame and this guilt. Like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I shouldn't be going toward my goal. Maybe, you know, Maybe my friends are uncomfortable with this now and and I should just quit and I should just give up so that they don't feel uncomfortable. But you have to be willing to do whatever it takes because ultimately the only person, here's what sucks. The person who cares the most about your goals is you. Anybody else that you go around is going to care just a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less. So if they're the fifth friend that you have, they could probably give two craps about your goal. And purposefully or impurposefully, they'll probably sabotage you. So you have to be willing to do whatever it takes. If you're going to do the work to change the thoughts, it's going to automatically change your actions. But when you get to that resistance, you're going to start feeling things like shame and you're going to want to back down, but you have to be willing to do whatever it takes. You have to be willing to go to the gym when everybody else is going to dinner. You have to be willing to get up early when everybody else is sleeping in. You have to be willing to drink water 
when everybody else is drinking alcohol or soda. Like these are the things that you would have to do in that sense as far as a fitness goal is concerned. Business, you have to stay longer at work. You're going to have to build up more savings to launch your business. You're going to have to work overtime. You're going to have to sacrifice weekends. You're going to have to make calls. You're going to have to do emails. Like there's a lot of work that has to be done, but you have to be willing to do whatever it takes and not be ashamed when the resistance comes. When you get up against that wall of people who don't understand. Okay? So thoughts, actions, Results. So ultimately, thoughts are controlling results. We get the results. They're directly reflections or direct reflections, excuse me, of your efforts. Your results are direct reflections of your efforts, and your efforts are direct reflections of your results. Did you stay and make the extra phone calls? Did you send the other emails? Did you go to the gym for the third time this week? Did you drink the water? Did you eat that meal? Did your efforts equal your results? Because they will every single time. But did you put in the effort? You can't blame your circumstances. Look, if you want results, you have to get away from this idea. And this is this is a year, trust me. Trust me when I tell you this. This is a year where it's super easy to blame circumstances. And if I'm being completely honest, I've probably blamed COVID a couple times for different things. But at the end of the day, I know that it's on me to figure it out. It's on me to grow. It's on me to improve. It's on me to shift. It's on me to get better. And if I don't do those things, then, well, my results are going to reflect my effort. Right? But you can't blame your circumstances. Too many times we want to say, oh, it's their fault. Well, my friends weren't supportive of me going to the gym. They gave me a hard time. They wanted me to go to dinner with them instead. And then, you know, that one time led to two times. The two times led to me taking three weeks off. And then all of a sudden I gained 10 pounds and I just gave up. Or if it's more of a business, you know, well, you know, my friends wanted me to hang out this weekend and I know I was supposed to make the 30 phone calls, but honestly, you know, I just thought I could do it next week and then I ran out of time during the week and then the weekend came and then I had to do something with family that was already pre-planned and all of a sudden those 30 calls are three weeks later and you haven't moved forward. Like you have to ask yourself, when is enough enough? When am I going to stop blaming the things around me? I start taking control of my life, my goals, my results, my thoughts, my actions. Take time to notice how far you've come. So a lot of times when we're talking about seeing results, it gets frustrating because we're not seeing the amount of results that we want to see. So you've got to look back. And I'm not saying look back a lot. Just sometimes look back and see how far you've come. If you're on a business journey and you're looking at five locations, are you close to location one? Or are you at location one? You know, if you if you need 15 more clients, do you have three clients now that you didn't have before? If you need to lose 100 pounds, have you lost 20? Like how far have you come? You have to recognize the positive things that are happening. This literally goes back to thoughts. If you're looking at the situation, oh, I've only picked up this many clients, I've only lost this much weight, I've only been able to achieve this, well then, yeah, it's negative. But if you say, you know, I'm not where I want to be, I'm not where I should be, but I have been able to do this, I have been able to lose 10 pounds, I have been able to drink more water, I have been able to make those calls, I have been able to pick up a few clients, I have been able to land that deal that I needed. All of a sudden it starts to shift. Your perspective starts to change. And you can, again, move forward. And the last part about results is embrace the next challenge. Look, challenges are never going to go away. And it doesn't matter. I, I hear people say this all the time. Well, once I make so much, once I make X amount, once I make six figures, that, that's always a number that's thrown around. Once I make six figures, then it's just going to be a lot easier and I'm not going to have to do this and that and I'm not going to be worried about it. More money is more problems. And that's not a negative statement. 
I embrace problems because I see problems as opportunities a lot of times. Not all the time. I struggle with that sometimes. But when you are growing and you are increasing your income, you're going to have more things come up that have to be taken care of. Maybe it's something with taxes. Maybe it's something with um, you know, your business or your building. Or maybe it's something with family. Maybe it's something with your pet. We just had to take our dog to the vet this week because she got some crazy bacterial infection. Don't know, how, don't know where, don't know how, but that was almost a $400 vet bill that we didn't want to have to pay for. Things happen. Things come up. And the bigger you get, usually the bigger the problem. That doesn't mean it every single time. But I hate this idea that, well, once I get to this level, I'm not going to have any more problems or any more challenges. Like You have to embrace the next challenge, the next stage. Because if you don't embrace that next stage or that next challenge, you're never going to see the full result. You're never going to see the full outcome. So thoughts... Take responsibility for them. Actions, take responsibility for them. Results, take responsibility for them. If you take responsibility and you start owning the setbacks as much as you own the progress, you're going to start changing the way you think. As you change the way you think, you're going to change the actions you take. As you change the actions you take, you're ultimately going to change the results that you see. So if you want to see better results, think better thoughts. Thank you for joining me today on the episode. I think we're on episode 32. Again, taking responsibility, own your progress and your setbacks. Connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. Got a YouTube up now. It's youtube.com backslash channel backslash Michael B. Life. Again, it's my first name, Michael, letter B, L, I, F, E. Uh, That's where you can find me on all the platforms. I'd love to connect with you, chat with you, get to know you. If not, any way I can serve, any way I can help, have a great day.